Hello everyone and welcome to The Farmer Was Replaced. And essentially it's a, a small little indie, uh, like kind of like, a, well, I don't know if it's an indie game or not, but it's um, similar to like a like an idle type of vibe game, but with programming. So I do have some programming knowledge. Um, I have been working as a programmer for a while and uh, yeah, so, but I don't, well, firstly, disclaimer, I don't claim to uh, be the best or anything like that. And I know in certain cases, the comment section could get a little bit uh, crazy because essentially there is a million ways to do a specific thing. And uh, yeah, um, essentially, um, I'm going to give this a go. Uh, I've, uh, like I saw it, I've, um, I was quite intrigued by it. And essentially, yeah, and what this is all about is basically farming, but with some automation and you specifically code that automation, which basically gets me quite excited for this uh, because it's something different. It's something that I haven't really tried before yet. And uh, yeah, let's see what this is all about. Okay, so getting started. This window contains information about everything in the game. You can move windows around by dragging and dropping um, the gray part of the window. You can move around by dragging anywhere outside the windows. Okay, cool. To get started with programming, go to the first program page by clicking it. Okay. So, uh, first program, text editor. All programming is done in code windows. Each code window corresponds to a text file containing code. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so... I do know what a text editor is. Well, everybody should know what a text editor is. It's basically like um, uh, the most basic text editor that you can get is, for example, Notepad. And then with programming, you would use uh, something a little bit more advanced that has extra features. For example, uh, Visual Studio Code or uh, Eclipse or IntelliJ. Uh, those are all called IDEs. And essentially, base, um, that's where programmers usually write their code in but there are also yet again many of them out in the world okay so we can add more code windows by using this plus button perfect and this is our text editor so we can write all our code in here okay so uh getting down to this part uh so essentially it's very similar to python um yeah so it's basically it's it's quite similar to python so it's saying here if you already know python it's not a problem either you'll you'll just be able to skip the early game quickly to get to the more interesting stuff and also just a, as a quick disclaimer don't worry if this is your first time programming the language is unlocked step by step so you won't be overwhelmed by all the things you can do the syntax is also uh, similar to that of python uh, which is one of the most widely used programming languages in the world. So learning it is not completely wasted. So this has got some, some, uh, yet, yet again, another disclaimer. Um, not all, but some uh, knowledge that you could gain for like progr programming a bit. Okay. So currently the only statements available are harvest and do a flip. And these are basically functions that you can call that basically executes a, a set of um, different code. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit later in the game, I'm assuming, if functions are a thing. And, uh, or like user-defined functions. But uh, yeah, so these are function calls. A function is essentially a piece of functionality that can be executed. You execute using the parentheses. Okay, cool and uh, unlocks so collecting grass will give you hay hay uh, can be used to unlock loops in the unlock menu uh, open the unlock menu with the button on the top right corner okay so here's all our unlocks so essentially we need to unlock loops and for that we need five hay it seems and then from there we can then trickle down on into the lower level stuffs and oh here there we go we can define our own functions so eventually down the line we can definitely define functions that which would make 
uh, work for us a little bit easier. But let's get to it. So we have two statements available. So do a flip and harvest. So I think do a flip would do a flip. <laughs> and oh yes, and this plus uh, this uh, play button is uh, to execute the code in this window. And essentially all that we're doing, uh, telling it to do is do a flip. Then the other thing that we have is harvest. So we can call harvest like this and that would basically harvest hay for us. And we can see that the grass automatically grows back. And uh, yeah. Okay, so we have 14, let's make it 15. Go to unlocks and we only needed five so now we can unlock loops unlocks a simple while loop okay so this one we can close now so while loop. so essentially i do know what a while loop is i'm not going to read through all of this documentation because it's um essentially in most programming languages uh syntax to some extent are the same if you know one language in certain cases um then you would not necessarily know it, all the languages or all the other languages but it's the kind of like the logic around it there might be some syntax differences and stuff like that but essentially um like a while a while loop can do um specifically a while loop or a for loop um many programming languages if not all have it and essentially it's just there's slight syntax differences um in these scenarios okay so while loop essentially what we can do with that is uh, so in this case it's basically we, we're going to be using a while loop with a condition and essentially what we can also do is for example like they explained here is we can uh if we want to wanted to harvest multiple times we can just say harvest 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 and that would harvest uh, basically five times but if we want to do um, harvest, let's say, uh, any number of times, we can't be doing this. This is very, very bad practice because it's repeated code. It's not feature proof. It's yeah, it's, 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 it's just quite bad. So what we can do is we can specify with a while loop. And essentially what we're doing here is we're saying that while it is true so this is the condition so later on we can basically uh, be able to change that condition into more of a um condition to say uh while this is true so while um some number is less than another number do this code and essentially that's what this is so this would create an infinite loop and in most cases infinite loops are bad um it also yet again depends on scenario but there is a little bit a uh, little note here saying that don't worry about creating infinite loops the delays in the execution will prevent the program from freezing and that's essentially what most likely infinite loops do is basically they execute code over and over and over and over again without an exit condition and it would just run for all eternity until it is specifically stopped and this is exactly what we want right now. So while it is true, just harvest. And essentially now we can just leave it and it would just go on and on and on. And basically, as you can see, all our uh, hay goes into a little piggy bank. And that would for uh, up until when I click this button or the pause button, basically it will run this up until when I ever stop it okay so that is a while loop cool so what is next so basically my knowledge of programming to some extent um is coming in handy at the moment uh because essentially you can if you don't have any programming knowledge you should also be able to play this game because essentially this uh, from what i've seen this documentation is quite extensive. It tells you exactly what a while loop is. It gives you examples in terms of uh, if you had to run it this way versus this way. It's basically um, 
uh, it, it tells you everything. So yeah, essentially that's about it. And also what you might be wondering is why that open space there? So that in this case for this language, um, that's basically scope. So everything in this line over here, so let me just stop this. So everything in this line over here where the cursor is. So for example, um, so all of this. So all of this code is within the scope of this while loop. And essentially because it's been indented once. And if we had to do that, then that means harvest will only be called, well, harvest will be called um, two for five times in this while loop. And then let's say this condition eventually became false. It would then execute harvest only once, this harvest specifically, or let's do do a flip. So in this case, it will never execute do a flip because this while loop will run infinitely and unless this condition here turns false. When it turns false, it will execute do a flip. So that's all about scopes. And you'll you'll see it a little bit later, uh, probably in the video as well, but also in other videos where scopes are quite important. And even if we wanted to do, for example, that, it will give us an error because essentially it says there isn't enough indentation here. There must be more indentation after a uh, colon um, than before it is uh, before to separate the new code block and use tab key to indent. So essentially once we do that, then it works because it sees that uh, you can't just have the while true with nothing in it. It's, it doesn't make any sense. You have to have something running inside the while loop. Okay. So a little bit of brief overview of that. So let's go and have a look at what we can still unlock. Okay, increases the speed of the drone. Okay. So now we can see it does it quite a bit faster actually. So let's stop that for a, for a second. Uh, also, we can see we're not getting any hay because I think it's, it's harvesting it before it's ready. So let's have a look at this documentation. The execution speed has been doubled. The problem is that the, the drone now harvests faster than the gro a grass can grow, resulting in no harvest at all. To deal with this, uh, if branches and um, to deal with this, if branches and the can harvest function are now unlocked. Okay, cool. So so far we only had the true and false conditions, uh, which of which is of course not very useful with if. Okay, yeah, because if you say if true, then it will always execute. Um, let's do, do a flip. There we go. If you say if true, it will always execute this. And that really defeats the point of an if statement. Because essentially the if statement is just saying if this condition is true. So if you say if um, 1 plus 1 equals to 2, then it's true because it makes sense. Um, there's some condition. Um, if you add other variables, you might say, okay, cool. If this variable is equal to 10 or greater than 10 or something like that, then execute this code. Otherwise, execute a different set of code. So that's what an if statement is. And essentially here we can get access to the can harvest method or function. And so then how we can call this by, by saying if can harvest, then do something. And the, the can harvest basically returns a true or a false to say, is this harvestable? So are we going to get something out of it if we do harvest it? So that's what the, like this function is. There's, because there's a, a bit of code behind this function that we don't see because it's been provided to us. But essentially, now we can say, okay, all of this true. If we can harvest, then if we can harvest, then harvest. So now with, well, let me show you just before that. So if we do this, we can see we don't get any more hay because it's not waiting for it to finish growing. 
So now if we do that, if we say if can harvest, then harvest. So yet again, you can see the scope now. This harvest is now within this if statement's scope. The if statement scope is within the while loop. Okay, so now if we play this, now we can see it's slower, yes, but it's waiting for the grass to finish growing. And yeah, that's now the can harvest and if statements. So as you can see, this game does introduce you quite slowly um, into uh, new syntax going forward, because essentially all of this we're going to carry on using for the foreseeable future. Okay, so now we can increase the yield of the grass. So that costs 100 hay and essentially that will give us, I think, uh, two, yes, two hay um, for each harvest, which is actually quite nice because now we're actually harvesting hay a little bit faster. Okay, so we can close that one. Let's see. Uh, plant unlock, expand unlock. Okay, unlocks planting and expand. Okay, let's do expand. Uh, expands the farm, farmland and unlocks movement. Oh, okay. Okay, so now we have three blocks. Okay, your farm has grown. Uh, the space is not much use um, if you can't move the drone. So there is a new function called move uh, that moves the drone. Move requires you to uh, you specify the direction in which you want the drone to move. There are four new constants for this, north, east, south, and west. For example, move north will move the drone one square, one square to the north. If you move uh, over the edge of the farm, the drone will be moved to the other side of the farm. So the following example code will keep, mo keep moving north and wrap back to the start when it reaches to the edge of the farm. Okay, so here it says while true, move north. And essentially, uh, so what they're saying is basically, if we uh, move north and north, if we move north once more, we will end back end back up in this location here. So let's stop that first. Um, I just want to uh, set the audio just a slightly lower. There we go. Okay. So now we can, what we can do is we can harvest and then we can move north. So essentially what this code is now going to do is it's going to um, check can it harvest this uh, land? If so, then yes, harvest it. It will grab the hay and then straight after harvesting, it will move one up. Then we'll redo the thing again to say on this block, can I harvest it? Yes, harvest and then move yet again. So let's see it in action. And there we go. So now it's constantly gonna be mining. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So what is next? So that was expand. Oh. Oh, we can um, unlock more. So it increases. So it's it's uh, costing more. So it seems like the, the, this block is obviously there's nothing more that we can do about it, but these ones we can still upgrade. Okay, so we can even expand more then. Okay, perfect. Um, next one, because we need, it looks like wood that we need. And I'm assuming we get that by planting, maybe trees, I'm not sure, but let's have a look at plants. Okay. Grass is nice uh, because it grows automatically. All the other plants have to be planted with the plant function. The only plant you can plant right now is a bush. You can pass the type of plant you want to pl uh, plant um, to the function like this. So plant uh, entities.bush. So that's the type of plant we, we want, we would like to plant. Um, this will plant a bush under the drone. Uh, call clear to reset the farm to all grass and reset the drone position. Okay. Okay, cool. So let's have a look at that. So essentially, what we can do is once we've harvested, 
uh, because essentially, even if it's a bush or if it's um, the grass or whatever, we want to harvest it first and then plant a new one and then move. So in between these two statements, I will add plant with entities dot uh, we would like to uh, do a bush. So this is also co called code complete. So um, as you can see here, it gives us the options that are available. So essentially we can say either grass or bush, and then it will auto complete it for us. And the same goes for, um, for this. So we can say harvest. So all of this is code complete. And essentially, so all of this is available to us to use specifically. And we will have a look at that a little bit later as well, because essentially um, I did see quite a few things there, which uh, is quite interesting to use as well. But yeah, let's take it from there. OK, so now we're going to harvest, plant the bush and then move north. So let's see how this works. OK, so now we're waiting for the bush to grow and then it harvests and it plants a new one. OK. And now we're actually getting um, wood. Awesome. OK, so what do we unlock next? Um, I think perhaps the senses so the drone can see what's under it and where it is. OK, let's see what this is. If we're going to use it at the moment, I'm not sure because we still have a quite small area. Um, the drone can see now the functions get position X and get position Y, uh, return the current X and Y position of the drone. At the start, uh, they are both zero. So this is basically um, X zero, Y zero. And then this is X zero, Y one, and Y two with X zero, because it's still on the X. Um, X is um, this plane over here, and Y is going up. So the vertical plane and then the horizontal plane is X. OK, uh, the, the X position increases by one every tile towards east and the Y position increases by one every tile towards north. OK, yeah, so that's exactly what I explained just now. So every time when you go up, the Y position goes up every time when you go east. Um, so that yeah, to the east side, to the right side, uh, basically the X position, uh, the, yeah, the X position will go up. So the, the minimum that we can have is zero and zero. Okay, then we have also have the num items a function that basically returns how many items you have. So I think we can then do uh, something in terms of more um, uh, more logic to say if we have uh, let's say over seven hundred hay, then rather plant um, bushes. And if we have less than six hundred, then or less, less than seven hundred or whatever it was then plant hay again and so we can uh so here you can see how many more different things we can start doing and we also have get entity type and get ground type uh return the type of entity or, or ground that is under the drone once you have unlocked operators you can check if the drone is over a specific entity or a ground okay so then basically we can say okay cool um what kind of thing is below the drone. So is it the bush? Is it a tree? Is it um, grass? Um, so yeah, basically we can then check that. And then if it is something, then we can do something about that. OK, the none keyword is also unlocked now. None is a value that represents that there is no value. For example, a function that has no return statement will actually return none. OK. And then also, if there is nothing below the drone, then um, none is also returned. So, for example, um, harvest would most probably return a none because essentially there is it doesn't it, it it's a function that does something. It doesn't uh, it's not like an, uh, a function that basically returns a value to say um, a, a function called sum that takes in two values that basically takes those two values, um, adds them together and gives you the total. And essentially, um, that's a return value. Uh, whereas um, a normal function that just does something will usually just return none. Okay, 
Perfect. Uh, so we've got that covered. Um, I don't think we'll be using this at the moment. So I'm just going to minimize that and put, put it over there. And let's see. Uh, can we expand? Yes, we can. Let's expand again. Okay. Okay, so now we have a 3x3. Three three. Perfect. Your farm has expanded again. Now the tiles are no longer in a nice row, uh, so you need to find a way to traverse a square grid. With a while loop, this is not possible until you unlock sensors and operators. It is time to introduce the for loop. You can read all about the for loop um, on the for loop page, but for now you will only need, need it to repeat code a fixed number of times. So. Uh, we can use a for loop in this way, so for i in range of 5, so basically it will execute this do a flip 5 times. So it, this is kind of like the, the condition I was talking about a little bit earlier. We can say, okay cool, um, for, uh, for, like, uh, for any number of times, do something. While a while true, in this case here on the right, that will do it uh, infinitely basically. Okay, then we have a function called get world size. Um, it's also available now. It returns the side length of your farm. This way you can write code that won't break with the next expand upgrade. Okay, so this is nice because essentially um, we can now say, uh, we'll include that in our code to say, um, do we want to go up three times or we don't have to manually code to say, go up three times and then go down three times so on and so forth now we can code for that to say okay cool we get the world size and even if we expand again uh, which then changes it to a four by four then we don't need to go and change our code again we can literally just let it run because now it's expecting the world change to um to be four or five or how many ever it can get so this example harvests um one column of the farm for any farm size. If you're stuck on trying to figure out how to move the drone around the farm, see the hint below. Okay. So let's have a look. Essentially what we can do. Um, so I'm, I'm just gonna, let's do a new window and we'll pop this one over here. So we'll do a new window. So. It's, uh, oh, we can rename it, nice. So movement only, okay. So we're we're gonna focus just on movement and we'll say while true, because essentially we want to figure out the code to basically traverse this um, grid of a three by three so that we know that the drone will go over each and every block in a sequence order, basically. Now there's many, many different ways of doing this. So what we can do is firstly, we can move north. Okay, so this will keep on moving north, but eventually we would need to move to the side to cover all of these. Okay, then what we can say is, okay, cool. Um, if the get world, get world size is, uh, well, if, um get position y it is equal to get world size then move east okay so and i know this code is technically wrong at this point of time uh, i'm just doing this to show you guys but essentially the get position y gives us the drone position in the y axis. So whether it's here, here, or here. The get world size gives us, let's see, comments. Okay. So in this case, where the drone is at, at the moment, is we're basically we're saying if um, zero, uh, or I think it's, is it zero indexed or not? I'm not sure, but we'll see. Okay. So let's say, no, it is zero because it said that this is position zero, zero. Okay, so that is zero. And if that is equal to the get world size, which is three. But so 
that three is essentially what we're going to get back here at this point of time. And the get position Y is zero here because we are currently on that position over there. Now, we want to basically move to the right once we are basically um, either here or here. Because we, when we reset, we want to be moving to the right. Okay, so if for the position Y, which is currently zero, is the world size, then do this. Otherwise, we don't do anything because we want to move up. But if we say here is zero, one, two, get world size will return us three because we have a three by three. So what we can do in this case, we can say plus one. And we can also wrap this in parentheses just to make it clear that this code needs to get executed first and then check with the equal sign to this. So if we do this, let's see what happens. Um, oh, we need a colon there. Okay. Oh, we don't have operators yet. Ah, okay. Let's unlock operators. Okay, so I'll cover operators just now, but let's have a look. And we, if you, for loops, I'm not really concerned about right now. Uh, we'll probably use them a little bit later. Okay, so now we can see it's going across each and every time. Okay, so that is very, very good. So what we can then now do with this code is now we can basically harvest. So essentially before we move, we can say harvest. Okay. So now it will harvest and it will execute each and every single one of them. Just want to check something because this is not great. Okay. So we'll move up, up. Okay. So it doesn't Ah, okay. So it's a bit weird, but it's fine. It, it it goes through each and every one. It's fine. Um, It's fine for now. We'll rework all of this code a little bit later. Okay. Um, So then what we can then do as, as well is harvest or plant these bushes. So now it will basically plant each and every one of them and in a very weird way it's not my intent intention to be to have it this way but essentially um yeah so we're we're basically um farming wood now automatically okay awesome and then um there's probably just one more thing i would like to do before i end this episode and that is basically what if we wanted to have grass on the first row and maybe wood on the second two rows? How would we do that? So we would always want to harvest. That's a, a given. But in terms of what we want to plant, that is the thing. And the movement we know is already separate. We don't care about the movement, that the movement works to some degree. Yet again, like I said, there is many, many, many different ways of doing things. Um, there are more efficient ways. And at the moment, I'm not really too worried about it because we are still super, super early game. Uh, we can worry about the more complex code a little bit later. Okay, but essentially, the problem I'm facing right now is I would like grass in the first row and bushes in the second and third row. What we can do is we can say either multiple ways. If get position X is equal to um, uh, position X. So this is zero, one, two. If it is one, then plant the bush. And essentially, now what we'll see is when we run the code, see how it's not planting the bushes here and here, because it will only plant the bushes now in the position X of one. 
now we want it to be on the second one as well so we can also say uh, if we have a look at the operators here so we have arithmetic operators which is a plus minus multiply divide um, so on and so forth we have comparison operators which is um, to compare values so here we can see get this value is it equal to this value so you'll be saying is this value equal to this value that's a, compar a comparison uh, the plus is basically saying one plus one so that's um and that will give us a value um that will literally add them up but essentially the equals equals is saying compare this value with this value is it the same and will uh, give us a true or a false value Okay, and if it's true, it will execute this code. If it's false, it will just move on with this code. But then we have also Boolean operators saying not, and, or, or. And essentially what we can do is we can say or, and we can grab this code. And we can say if the position X is one or the position X is two, then plant. So now if we execute this code, we can see that this row stays grass and these two rows or columns basically um, gets turned into bushes. Now, the reason why I also said there's multiple ways of achieving this is we can also then say, instead of doing all of this, we can say, if it is not zero, then we can take all of that, the rest of that out if it is not zero, then plant a bush. So now we're basically saying only execute this plant method if the exposition is not zero. And the same can go for if it is greater or equal to, um, to one or greater than zero specifically. If the exposition is greater than zero, then plant. So there are many, many different ways of um, how we can achieve the same thing. And that's what I'm trying to come across to you is to say, okay, cool. Um, yeah, there's really many ways to do this. And essentially there are more performant ways. There are uh, more future proofing ways. And, but those type of things you need to discover for yourself by playing around with this. Uh, uh, so this is uh, kind of while I'm editing the video, um, I figured also out why um, this was happening. So why it basically skipped this block over here and basically went haywire every now and then, so on and so forth. Um, and essentially the reason for that is that um, this code, the movement to the east, is happening after move north. If we move that over just above it, so we either move east first and then move north, or we don't move east at all and we just move north, then basically it actually works perfectly fine. So now we can see it moves there, moves there, pull, down, and basically it will always, when it reaches the top, it will move to the right and go down and then up again. So this is not very efficient at this point of time, but we will be enhancing it a little bit later because essentially my idea is to basically go up, down, and then up again. And if if we get then further into more um, like a four by four or five by five, it should do that automatically then as well. Okay. But on that note, Basically, I think I'm going to stop the episode here. Um, there was quite a for so maybe some people uh, that have never coded before. It might be a lot. So have a look through it. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did like it, please feel free to leave a like. And uh, if you're not subscribed, please feel free to subscribe as well. But on that note, guys, have an absolutely, absolutely fantastic day. And I will see you in the next episode. Cheers.